Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are and whatever time you're viewing this broadcast or this, this recording, I want to say welcome to New Beginning Celebration. This is the day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. I'm excited for what Jesus Christ has on tap for his church this day. This is a wonderful time to be alive. You know, everybody's looking for that one special thing that they can have a part of or be a part of in life. But I submit to you that being a part of the end time or the latter days of time is amazing uh, to be a part of. Why? Because it validates our, our salvation and it gives us great security in Christ. And we get to watch the Lord do things for us and his hedge of protection around us and his exaltation of us and blessing of us in a time when everything is crumbling around us and his people shine. When it got all dark around the land of Egypt, when the children of Israel were still in Egypt before they made the exodus, while they were still there, that one plague of darkness being all over the land, there was light in one place, Goshen. The one place where all the children of Israel abided, there was light. See, a lot of pastors won't highlight that. But when darkness covered the land on that plague of darkness, you could look over towards Goshen and see light illuminating the sky. What an honest, honorable God of integrity, a God of truth, and a God who truly proves that he loves his children. As we were reading in the scripture this morning, he said he loves us. He says we are his. He says we were made for his glory. He has formed us. He has called us by our name. It's amazing. So then, because we belong to him, when we pass through the waters, what did he say? When we pass through the rivers, he will be with us, and it shall not overflow us. When we pass through the fire, through the flame, we shall not be burned, nor shall the flame even scorch us. Isaiah wrote that, and in the book of Daniel, you saw the Hebrew boys go, into the fiery furnace. And those who threw them in got burned up. And they came out and their clothes didn't even smell of smoke. Hey, we're excited to bring you the word of God today. Uh, my, I'm Pastor Damon. We're at New Beginning Celebration, 3400 Trent Road, Suite D. If you ever get an opportunity, 1030 on Sunday morning, 7 o'clock on Wednesday evenings, come and join us. New Bern, North Carolina. That's 3400 Trent Road, Sweet D, New Bern, North Carolina. And we're going to continue into uh, part 5B, I believe, of effective prayer that always manifests an answer. Effective prayer that always manifests an answer. And when we left off on our last session of this series, we were going through the examination of prayers from the Bible. Because God is so neat and nice and proper in how he does things and, in, and, ha, and has paid so much attention to detail in the order of how he does things. He gave us examples of prayer in the Bible. I am just thoroughly, thoroughly excited to do this. So today as we continue on in this series, since prayer is something that is a necessity for life for the Christian, other cults and religions and stuff thinks the same thing in some kind of way, shape, or form. They get that. They get that from the Bible. It's the oldest ancient set of documents on to, on how to live in the earth. Most of the most of the modern day Christian cults got started by people who, at one time, were coming up in households of Christian parents that believed in Jesus Christ by faith. And raise them going to church. Hearing the word of God. Being taught and instructed the word of God in their homes. And they wigged out and thought they knew better than their parents. And started things like Mormonism and Jehovah's Witness. And Christian Science. And Seventh Day Adventist. And stuff like that. It's just. You don't believe in the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Then those three are one. As the Bible teaches. But today we're going to travel with another prayer. Let's, let's go to 2 Chronicles 1, 8 through 12. 
Travel on over to 2 Chronicles chapter 1, verses 8 through 12. We are examining another scripture of prayer. You know, we've taught throughout this series the proper way to pray. I mean, all the little nuggets. I mean, we're in part 5B or part 6. Before we even got to part 5, man, the Lord had done a number on us. The Holy Spirit had traveled us through all the details of prayer, what prayer is made up as, how prayer is active, how prayer is activated, how to pray, and guarantee that God answers the prayers. Let's get that little cliche out. Yes, no, maybe, or wait. Just say what the word of God says. Stop making up stuff. Because in my Bible, it says in 1 Corinthians, all the promises of God in Christ or in him are yes and in him, amen. If you are in Christ, all the promises of God in him, if you are in him, then all the promises are in him. They sit right there with you. You have been given every spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Well, where do you live? Your bank of plenty, you're living in it. Your blank, your bank of supply is you're living in it. I walk into my home, in my home, there's food in the closet. I don't have to walk out of the house into the neighbor's yard to get food. My bank of plenty is right there where I am. You are in Christ. And Christ in you. All right, here we go. Second Chronicles 1, 8 through 12. Now Solomon, the son of David, was strengthened. No, excuse me. Yes. Now the Solomon, the son of David, was strengthened in his kingdom. And the Lord God was with him and exalted him exceedingly. And Solomon spoke to all Israel, to the captains of thousands and of hundreds, to the judges and to every leader in all Israel, the heads of the father's houses. Then Solomon and all the assembly with him went to the high place that was at Gibeon for the tabernacle of meeting with God was, excuse me, tabernacle of meeting with God was there, which Moses, the servant of the Lord, had made in the wilderness. But David had brought up the ark of God from, what's that, Kirjath Jerem, to the place David had prepared for it. He had, for he had pitched a tent for it at Jerusalem. Now the bronze altar that Baziel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, made, he put before the tabernacle of the Lord. Solomon and the assembly sought him there. And Solomon went up there to the bronze altar before the Lord, which was at the tabernacle of meeting, and offered a thousand burnt offerings on it. On that night, God appeared to Solomon and said to him, Pray. He said to him, Ask, what shall I give you? And Solomon said to God, You have shown great mercy to David my father and have made me king in his place. Now, O Lord God, let your promise to, my, to David my father be established. For you have made me king over a people like the dust of the earth in multitude. Now give me wisdom and knowledge that I may go out and come in before this people for who can judge this great people of yours. Verse 11. Then God said to Solomon, because this was in your heart and you have not asked riches or wealth or honor or the life of your enemies, nor have you asked long life, but have asked wisdom and knowledge for yourself, that you may judge my people over whom I have made you king. Wisdom and knowledge are granted to you, and I will give you riches and wealth and honor, such as none of the kings have had who were before you, nor shall any have the like after them. Father, we thank you for all that you've done for us, bringing us safely to a place, a day and time, where you can speak to our hearts whether it be here in the assembly inside of these four walls or be it at home or in our vehicles or out in our yard or 
While we're shopping in the stores, Father, you are always with us. Help us to have a listening ear where we can be consistent in the walk that we place before others to see the glory of our King. Now, Father, we pray and ask that you will fill us with the knowledge of your will and all wisdom and all spiritual understanding that we may walk fully pleasing unto you and worthy of your calling. You are awesome, Father, and help us to decrease as you increase to hear the sound of your voice and to follow and obey accordingly. For obedience is better than sacrifice. Teach us to pray today in your word and how valuable prayer is in our communion with you, Father, for you just want to be in communion with us. You want to be in fellowship with us. And we need to understand that prayer is inevitable. We love you, Father. We thank you so much for loving us. Amen. I know I said verse 8 through 12. I started at verse 1. So sorry for the confusion. Sorry for the confusion. Charge it to my head and not my heart. But just even being able to get a little bit of that backstory can kind of help out. Because as we see, the people were making preparation to give honor to the Lord, to give honor to God. Everything was being put in place. Let's go to verse 8 now and examine what's going on with this prayer. Because we're going to take a look at how the wisest national king ever to lead a nation prays and just how God responds to his prayer. He's been known, now his father David is the greatest to ever reign. Undefeated in all battles for 40 years. Seven years in Hebron, 30. 30, what is that, 7, 7, 33 years in Jerusalem. He reigned in Israel for 40 years as king. Verse 8. Y'all, let's go to verse 7. because I like, I like to back up there because this is beautiful. God says something and Solomon obeys it. Now, the Lord that told us to pray without ceasing, pray always. Be instant in season, out of season. Be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication. <coughs> <coughs> and the list of commands of what God asks concerning prayer or commands for prayer goes on and on and on. So let's look and see if God says the same thing to Solomon. Verse 7, on that night God appeared to Solomon and said to him, ask, what shall I give you? <clears throat> I look, you, you can't outgive God. He told Solomon to ask him something for the sole purpose of doing what? Giving. <clears throat> he didn't say ask so me and you can just chill and have a cool conversation. God's not a time waster. There's always a purpose and an intent and a move when he commands something to be done or even when we pray. We pray for God to, he, he doesn't ask us to pray just so we can just chill and have conversations. That's nice. <clears throat> and if God is like us in some ways, I'm sure he appreciates just hearing the sound of his children's voice communing with him. That is wonderful. But our communion still has to have purpose. How many of y'all ever heard me heard me to come talking about something? I don't have time for that. I, I what, my mind is focused on something, and you come talking to me about something, and I'm just like, Arr! have you checked? Uh, or have you seen? Have you? Why, why, I'm not going to waste my time investing in the energies of my brain cells into that situation. There's got to be a purpose, and the purpose is always with God for our good. He is good, and his mercy endures forever. Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and we all know what goodness is. Well, well-being, healthy, whole, healed, delivered. In fact, that's the word salvation. In the Greek, the word sozo. 
means to be saved, delivered, healed, whole, made well, be well. Oh, come on for some of you prosperity and healing naysayers. You don't even know what your word salvation means when you come and want to deny a man to preach prosperity and healing. The very word salvation in the Greek means prosperity and healing. Delivered, whole, well, made well, healed. Well, well-being. Well, what's well-being? That means I'm prospering somewhere. Well-being is not pro po uh, poverty. All right, let's keep going. Solomon, he says, Solomon ask, what shall I give you? He told him to ask, and then he asked the question. <laughs> it's beautiful. Beautiful. I love having a relationship with Elohim. With Yahweh Elohim, with Jehovah Elohim, the Lord our God. Look at Solomon. I mean, wisdom was already infused in him. You think he probably heard the word from David a little bit? You think he might have heard just one of those 150 Psalms? You think he might have been hanging out with David a little bit while he was strumming on a guitar or a harp and a an ink pen in one hand and playing the music in the other while he sang through and wrote one, just one of those 150 songs. I mean, that's his dad. All right, let's go. And Solomon said to God, you have shown great mercy. To who? The same man I'm just talking about. David, my father. Yeah, I think he, I think he knew a little bit about the word of God. I think he knew a little bit about God. I think he probably even knew that, man, my dad is a man after God's own heart. He didn't sit here and talk about, well, you know, I know you have shown great mercy to my father. And, uh, you know, even though there was some messes he had made and, you know, he wasn't always there when I needed him. And he, he didn't go through all of that. He did exactly what the fifth commandment says, honor thy father and thy mother. And Solomon understood one thing, in humanity, as human beings, we have pitfalls. Whether he saw his dad's pitfalls or not, I'm sure he did. I'm sure he may know the story between David and Bathsheba. He said, you have shown great mercy to, my, to David, my, <coughs> my father. <clears throat> and have made me king in his place. <clears throat> so the first way he engages God is to acknowledge his awesomeness. Let's put this up against the litmus test of proof or the standard of prayer. <clears throat> Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Blessed, hallowed, sacred is thy name. David just, Solomon just gave honor to the Lord in the fact that he had what? Mercy upon his father. <clears throat> he would not have made it without your mercy, Lord. <clears throat> you have shown great mercy to him and made me king in his place. So now because I'm king, here's my, here's my, my desire. Who do you think poured that desire into, into Solomon's heart? He's only praying back to God what God already gave him anyway. <clears throat> Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Again, that don't mean the fancy car and the big house and the pool and the <clears throat> 40 acres and a mule. The desires of your heart will be exactly what God's going to pour to you to align you up with who he is and then his purpose for your life. He will give you those things that you need to look for and pray about and talk about, and the way to live. He will give you the desires of your heart. He will plant into you the desires your heart is supposed to have. <clears throat> now, O oh Lord God, let your promise to David, my father, be established. Now, he didn't tell us right here what the promise to David was, right? He's not saying that here. Goes to show you, Solomon was sitting down and knew just a little bit about what the Lord 
and what the word of God had said to his father. Let that promise to David, my father, be established. He is praying back the, the power of the word of God to God. The Lord said, put me in remembrance. So now here he knows the word. Because he's now, he's now standing on and reflecting on and putting back into the hearing of God what he promised his father. Because all the promises of God in Christ are yes and in him, amen. Don't give me this yes, no, maybe, later, wait. Just say, we Christians, we complicate stuff so much. So much. And God has made it just nice and simple. Look how simple this is, right? Okay. But we want to make God difficult. We want to make him difficult. Scriptures make him knowable, makes his word livable. His power available. And our lives from it all transformable. You promised my, my father David be established. <clears throat> for you have made me king over a people like the dust of the earth in multitude. <clears throat> now give me wisdom and knowledge. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I mean, God is saying, ask. He said, what shall I give you? Uh, you ask me that, <laughs> right? I, I will be transparent. I'll be sitting around like, he's, you know, super saints. Ask me that, and I'm telling you what. Everybody is eating and driving and living. <laughs> you can't count the money for what I'm going to ask for. But look at Solomon. He went right to the heart of God. And see, that's how our prayers need to be. Give me wisdom and knowledge that I may go out and come in before this people. Now, I pray oftentimes using a prayer of Paul or a prayer that Paul wrote by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Fill us with the knowledge of your will and all wisdom and all spiritual understanding. Colossians 1 and 9. You go right into the word of God and sometimes there's stuff that you know if the Lord has inspired these individuals who are writing the scripture to write that, how safe do you think it is to pray that? You think it's safe to go into John chapter 17 and to what the, that, that is the Lord's prayer and take a little bit of what Jesus is praying and pray about this nation, about the world, about your families, about yourselves? I, I'd say it's probably a safe bet that you can grab a little piece of every prayer. I mean, one man wrote a whole book on a little prayer in a book. Of, the, the only time that man with that person in the scripture was ever mentioned, Jabez. Wrote a nice little book that sometimes is just small enough to fit in your back pocket. Powerful. And God granted him his request. Why? Because he prayed the will of God, meaning he knew the word of God. And that gives us the will of God. Solomon's doing the same thing. He knew the will of God was to establish that promise that he had made to David, his father. He knew the will of God was for him to lead the people of God. And he even goes, a people like the dust of the earth in multitude. Preacher didn't make that up and write that in some kind of script for a funeral. Ashes to ashes and dust to dust. That's in the word of God right from the very beginning. And he says, now give me wisdom and knowledge that I may go out and come in before this people. For who can judge this great people of yours? When he says judge, he's talking about leading, leadership. A leader has to judge. He has to be discerning between good and evil, right and wrong. Or was it not Solomon who had enough wisdom? All right, never mind, never mind, never mind. Then God said to Solomon, okay, so God's going to respond. Because this was in your heart. <laughs> Uh, 
Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Because this desire was in your heart, which I already knew it was there because you've been delighting yourself in me. I've already poured this desire into you. So this is the desire. That's where that scripture verse comes alive right here. Delight yourself in the Lord and he'll give you the desire. Who wrote that anyway? His oh, that was his daddy that wrote that, wasn't it? David. Okay, I got it. I got it. See, it comes full circle. Stay with me. And the Lord will bless you. I might fall out and do you wrong, but the Lord will bless you. All right, here we go. He said, because this was in your heart. And you, not, and you have not as riches, wealth, or honor, or the life of your enemy. See, that, that's where I would fall. That's where I fall. Now, and I'm not saying that God wouldn't give me that. But that would be what I get, right? Solomon asked for something much greater, obviously. Let's take notes. Let's take, I mean, you know, you don't have to write down notes, but you, I hope you do. But let's take note. What's in his heart? The riches and wealth was not in his heart. If, honor, if wanting to be honored above everybody else is in your heart, there might be something wicked working in you. Jesus says, if you want to be the greatest, you must become the least. All right, here we go. Know the life of your enemy. Because Jesus corrected that. He said, love your enemies. You don't have to desire the life of your enemy. I got that. Vengeance is mine. You do what I say do, and I've got you. Because in Psalm 91, it says, only we will look and see the reward of the wicked. Of our enemies. He said, but have asked wisdom and knowledge for yourself that you may judge my people over whom I have made you king. Solomon, I have, I have made you king. And you want to infuse my wisdom and knowledge into you to the point of where what I've called you to do, you could be better at doing. Now, I, I have to tell you. I had read and studied this a long time before I became or accepted and walked into the position that God had ordained in my life long before I accepted it and walked into it as a pastor. So all these hours and days and times of relentless study, when it was time, well, it was time before then, when, when I finally walked into the time of, all right, yes, Lord, I run no longer. This was similar to my prayer. Father, do you know the responsibility that this is? And how easy to be to mistakenly teach something that's not biblical. These precious lives that will sit before me as I am the man with a microphone to speak into their hearing and they sit humble, trusting with open minds and hearts that I'm going to tell them something that is right and true. I can't do this without you. I have to be filled with the knowledge of your will in all wisdom and all spiritual understanding so that I can teach and lead your people. Help me not to misuse or abuse this privilege that you have given me. And I mean, when I, went, when I was speaking this prayer, I was down on my face. I wasn't standing up right. Weeping. And when he told me to go, I went. I left home, wife, jobs, two $150,000 tractor trailers with two trailers hooked to them. And barely knew where I was going to live by the time I hit New Bern. In fact, a few days, my dad asked me, he says, well, son, that's good. I'm glad you're going to walk into what the Lord has called you. Me and my wife are walking up the sidewalk to his house. And we taking a stroll. I said, yeah, I'll be leaving, whatever, Monday or Tuesday, blah, 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 blah. Next week, sometime, whenever it was. He said, that's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. So where are you going to live? Now, I'd already been just told that I got the job over the place where I started here. He said, but where are you going to live? Her? I'm just days and a couple of hours from leaving town. 
My wife would testify of it. My dad asked that thing, and we just stopped on the side. And I looked at him and I said, I don't know. But I know the Lord has called me. Came down, we were a, two or three weeks out, weren't we? And I, we came down and visited a couple of places. I did a, a day, I, I know what happened. I did a day of, of, of work at the job, a half a day, just to kind of test it out, fill it out. I became assistant manager at that place and to, to check it out. And then we went over to the mall and ate. And then a, a mutual friend that we knew here, a friend of mine from, from, from some years back, Said, I want to ride y'all around. I said, yeah, we need to see what's going on. We need to see some properties. And we looked at three or four houses, that side of town, right in the middle of town, downtown, round town, <laughs> and then out to a little spot called River Bend was our last stop, five something in the evening, where we headed back to Raleigh. And we called the lady about it on the thing. She said, well, I'm tied up with another client right now. If you hang out there for a little while, I'll be there. She got there by 545. Ma'am, I'm sorry, we, 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 it was, just, it was just, just our last stop of the day. We, we wanted to see the house, but obviously she wanted to rent the house out to us. Get back to town, she says, okay, here's the paperwork, fill it out, blah, 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 you know, and $1,000 deposit, and whatever the rent's going to be for the month. She said, you send that to me by fax, if you can, as soon as possible. And I worked on our vehicle at the job I was at as a mechanic then, that evening, Started working on that vehicle about 7.30. At 11 o'clock, I was done working on that vehicle. And then, and that night, at 11.15, sent the fax. By 8.15 the next morning, I had a message on my phone that the house is ours. Whenever we're ready, come on and get it. And I was leaving next week. In fact, it was a couple of days. That's why I had to pray the way I prayed because I'm going to follow the Lord. Now, when he tells you something, we're still talking about prayer. When he tells you something and he assigns you to a position, he assigns gifts to your life. There's promises and delight and desire established with those things you trusted. I slept on the floor of that house on an air mattress that by 4.30, 5 o'clock in the morning was flat on the floor. Every day my back hurting. Two weeks into the journey, my wife is still in, New, in, in Raleigh with all my tools, two hours away, with all my tools and everything. I'm working using the company's tools to do what I do. Transmission locks up in the only vehicle I got down here. Three of them sitting up there in Raleigh in the yard. Two or three extras sitting up there, hers and, and one, at least one other, I'm sure. But I know we had at least two. I don't have any, I hardly know anybody, but the four, the four people I did know previously and my supervisor. And I'm crushed. God, you didn't leave me here for this. I know you didn't leave me here for this. And I followed you. I have followed you faithfully. I just walked away from a five-bedroom home with vehicles and people I know all over the city of Raleigh to come here where I'm almost all alone. I don't even have my spouse here to pick me up and help me get to work and back. I'm 5.3 miles from the door of my job where I'm sleeping on a hard floor. And I'm crying like a baby. Here I am, a man fixing other people's cars and I don't even have my tools and resources at, my, at the house where I am with a two-car garage to work on my own. I do is buy a transmission, take that one out, and put the other one in. And I can't even do that. And at the end of my crying and weeping and pleading and snotting and slobbering, somebody saw me laying up under the car and come over and tried to help me. So I said, okay, people are compassionate here. Thank you, Lord. Just having some other human being come around because I'm, 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 I'm just done. I can't do anything with these without tools. I can't do anything with this life without tools. Long short, God provides. 
one of my Fantastic Four, every blue moon, picked me up to come and take me to get my laundry done and buy some groceries at the store. She was good and faithful to me. Came a friend to us. Shouts out to Miss Doris. And somebody, I looked in the paper or on Craigslist, and somebody in the area was selling a bicycle. An $800 bicycle. They wanted $350 for it. And I think I wound up giving $150 for the bike. They said, we're not going to do anything. We'll take the money and put it in church. I said, well, praise God. And I rode that bicycle 10 and a half miles round trip every day to work for another month. out of shape as I could be at that time. I got in shape real fast. After about day five or six, I'd get to work and outwork everybody. Sweat pouring off of me. It is July, folks. July, that was August by the time I got here, July 20th or 24th or 4th, something, 20, 23rd. So that's August, and I'm riding that bike like that in the morning and in the evening. But let me tell you, by day five or six, them people at work hated me. Because we were just working like horses. And they couldn't keep up. So God gave me a blessing and a benefit for the breakdown. A healthier body. A much more sound mind. In days, I was named assistant manager of that job. I had just con con connected to, um, or with one of my friends, had connected to some ministry work that was going on in the community. Yeah, sure, I will do it. This big outreach we were going to start. And my car breaks down the day before. Who do you think? <laughs> Who do you think trying to hinder something? See, but God said, no, 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 no. I got you. And shouts out to Mr. Bill, who has now passed on. Because all my friends were old enough to be my parents. I told y'all, I don't hang out with young folk like y'all. Y'all are good friends and stuff, but I got to hang out with the folks that's a few miles down the road from me so I can get some wisdom to know where all those pitfalls are. Where the roadblocks are, where the popo is sitting, waiting for me to be speeding. Because I'm younger than them and I'm kind of dumb. Right? Mr. Bill would come and pick me up from where I worked. I'd rode my bike and put my bike in the back of his truck. And if he couldn't take me back all the way back out the river bend, because then we further away, we almost eight miles out from where I, I live. If he couldn't run me back real quick, he always made sure somebody there could put my bike in the back of the van or a truck or something and take me home. I got to know a lot of people. And I worked that outreach with them for three weeks like that. We're still on Solomon's prayer. I'm just trying to show you how the same prayer, the same calling of God, the same mandate that God put on Solomon when he puts it on somebody. If you'll just go faithfully, if you'll just do it, just by faith walk into it. He didn't say you had to forsake everything, but just by faith do it. Don't hesitate. Oh, God, I wish I not had hesitated at age 19 and waited till I'm 43 before I finally took on the responsibility of what he called me 20-some years ago to do. Now I'm 55, and I'm telling you what, it's been a, the enjoyment of my life. Yes, Lord. Now I got other things I need to get done first. No, you don't. You'll get those done. If you follow me, son, trust me. I'm building my second race car. I forsook trying to be a pastor because I wanted to keep playing trombone and building race cars and chasing children around the country, playing basketball and, and, and softball. Stupid. I could have still had all that in pastor the church. What's, who said that pastor in the church is going to cut all that out? All right. Eventually got my transmission fixed. $1,250 it cost. Somebody else had to do it. Wife gets here, band all of a sudden breaks down. I'm fixing, fixing, find out it's got a blown head gasket. Whew. You know what? This thing ain't worth fixing and putting all the work and money it's going to take to do this. Gave it away. God blessed us. Guess what? Another car, a nice four cylinder gas saving car, $1,250. So, you know, I'm beating up on the Mustang quite a bit. You see how God's growing us? You know, oh, look, there's another one of those cars. $1,250. Y'all think I'm joking. We drove all the way to Southern Pines for one of those cars, all the way back to Wake Forest, North Carolina, for the last one. 
gave one away and God blessed us. And I mean just not without hesitation. And we were thinking about, we had actually borrowed some money from, from a little loan company or whatever. Not for the cars, but just to help us stay afloat while we moved. $1,250. And me and my wife riding good. Two little Ford Escorts. Up and down the highway from here to Greensboro. Wearing them out. And God blessed us. Be faithful. Be faithful. Do what he's called you to do. The last little escort, we let somebody borrow it for about eight months to a year. Got it back. Gas tank empty. Dirt all over the carpet. Never even vacuumed it out, cleaned it. Nothing but being kind to someone. Got the car back, battery run down. Get the car back, freshen up, work on it. Drive it about a month or two. Somebody else needed to borrow a car. Say, hey, we got a spare car. My brother gives me a car. And all I did was did a nice little tune-up on it at home. And I'm telling you, drove flawlessly five years. I drove that car every day back in work. It's now the one going on the trailer for the race car, by the way. <laughs> he already knew that. But let somebody else borrow that car. That's the last time we ever were able to drive that car. Blew a head gasket up in that. Had to take them home from our house that day. And the car never drove again. Towed it over to my job. Friend of ours that worked with me wanted the car. I said, man, I'll take it and fix it up and drive it. Gave him the vehicle. Gave him a Ford Escort and went and got a Corvette a few weeks later. Because God had just blessed us with the money. And me and my wife wanted a nice little date car. So we gave up a Ford Escort. <laughs> <laughs> and money that didn't even come out of our pocket, the Lord blessed us with a nice little sporty Corvette. I gave that testimony for somebody out there or in this room to understand, just like Solomon, when God calls you, now you see how to pray, pray it, follow him faithfully without hiccup, and God just might take your escort and give you a Corvette. <laughs> now we have a nice little building to worship in. We're paying the bills for it. They ain't missed a beat. Folks, I can't tell you how much money for the faithful giving of just the people that are here today and some others that visit sometime. I mean, there's not a lot of people in this room. We got enough money in that bank account to go out and buy any piece of property around Newburgh we want. Any piece of property. Follow him and watch him multiply your life from an escort to a Corvette. Y'all be here. <laughs> Let's keep going. I know he is in that materialism. No, I'm not in materialism. I'm telling you, whatever goes on inside of something will manifest outside. If there's a lot of hell and hiccup in your home and you and your wife and your children or your husband and your children, and when you get outside of that house, it's going to be revealed somewhere. I know. I got nieces, nephews, grandchildren, and children who have been asked questions because they're starting to fall down and stumble in school because there's been hell and hiccup in the homes. Whatever going on on the inside will manifest on the outside. God wants to reveal this to the people because it's for his glory. Look at what I've done to my child who just a few years ago was flat down on their face with nothing. But because they honored me and because they didn't ask for all that stuff for themselves but asked to grow in me, I'm showing you how they're growing in me. I love the Lord. All right, so let's get back to Solomon. Let's get back to this prayer. We're at verse 11. Verse 11. Then God said to Solomon, because this was in your heart and you have not asked riches or wealth or honor or the life of your enemies, nor have you asked long life. You didn't even ask to live long, Solomon, but you have asked wisdom and knowledge for yourself that you may judge my people over whom I have made you king. Wisdom and knowledge are granted to you. Let's keep going. He gives them exactly what he asked for. But God is a multiplier and he blesses beyond what we even can ask or think. Exceedingly abundantly above all that we can 
Okay, that's a, that's a verse out of it. And I will give you riches and wealth and honor such as none of the kings have had who were before you, including your daddy. And David was rich. But including your daddy. That be, when he said none of the kings that were before you, that includes David. <laughs> I know by now, you know, <clears throat> the man did like wealth. His knees are buckling because he knew how rich his father was. <clears throat> He knew how rich the kings were in Egypt and other nations around the world. <clears throat> Riches, wealth, and honor such as none of the kings have had who were before you, nor shall any after you have the like. So Solomon came to Jerusalem from the high place that was a Gibeon. When we want God, because wisdom and knowledge only comes from him. When we want more of God, this is his answer. When we know how to pray as we follow, when we honor him in our prayer and recognize his awesomeness of who he is, you are the only one who could have granted mercy to my dad, and you did. Now, I know your word because I know the promises that you made to my father, and may they be established. I receive it, I accept it, and I'm looking for you to establish those promises that you gave to my father. And now I'm going to show you that I accept and walk into that responsibility that you have called me to because you have made me king over people who are like the dust of the ground, which includes me. But you have made me king over them. What an honor. So now he's accepted the calling of God. He's recognized God as God. He honored his father and mother. Or his father for, the, for sure. But if you recognize honor his father, he's honoring his mother as well. He knew God's word because he talked about the promises to his father David. So he prayed the will of God. And received and acknowledged that where God had taken him and what he's called him to do. And what he prayed for was to be blessed <clears throat> and filled with what it was going to take to carry out this mission. And what did God do? Come on, y'all already know the stories. How many of those Proverbs filled with wisdom did Solomon write? Song of Solomon, Ecclesiastes. Wasn't it Solomon when two, two women had... Had, had, had their children and one child had already died and they, 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 they the, the child, she rolled over on the child or something. I can't remember all the story. But one child had died and they were fighting about the other woman's baby. God immediately tested Solomon in that wisdom. And Solomon said, hey, well, well the, the, the bring the child to me. Because they were disputing about the child. Solomon laid the child, told his, told his men, lay the child right there on that table. And took out a sword and raised it up. He said, I'll tell y'all what I'm going to do. I'll cut the child in half. You'll get one half and you'll get one half and both of y'all will have a child. <laughs> and when he raised that sword, one woman screamed, don't, please, don't kill that child. Solomon said, give the baby to her, that's his mother. She'd rather give up that baby. She said, don't kill it. Give him to her. She'd rather give up her child than to see that child have to die a gruesome death. At least he'll live. He may not be with me. So I'm say, give that baby to that mom. That, that's his mother. Immediately, that wisdom was tested right out the gate. Can we see how the prayer of Solomon invoked good things? great thing, the will of God into his life and cause him to prosper. All the elements of what we've learned about prayer were right there in that prayer. Not that God is, is that meticulous or mechanical about that, but if he took time to write it, he wants us to use it that way. He took time to instruct us on how to pray. On praying if you'll pray, if you'll ask and believe and doubt not in your heart, 
If you'll pray according to his will, we know that he hears us. And if he hears us, then we know that we have the petition. That if we'll be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer, supplication, with thanksgiving. Come on, somebody. With prayer, supplication, in prayer, supplication, with thanksgiving, let our request be made known unto God. And then what? The peace of God that surpasses. Uh, that means I won't be worried about anything anymore. There won't be any anxiety because the one who promised the yes and amen has got it in his hands. Now transmission blow up in my car. I've grown a little bit since then. I felt alone though. Right? I knew God was with me, but I still felt alone. Transmission blow up in the car. Now I'm going to get out, close the door, probably kick it. Walk on down the road, call a tow truck, bring it to the house. No need to cry about it. Lord, how many cars have you given me since that one busted up and broke down? Never suffered financially at all. See, we look at it, doggone it, man, we just got this money. We have to spend it. We got to put it out now for this because of this. And never felt it. Look back, look back over our life and go, I didn't miss that. Pray the will of God and ask God just as Solomon did. There's a prayer written right here for you. Father, some of us have jobs where we're in leadership. Father, this day, fill me with wisdom and knowledge that I may be able to effectively do my job. That I won't do harm to anyone's life and that I will judge rightly on the decisions that, because some of us have to make some hard decisions. It could evict somebody out of a home, but you have to do it. But make sure you're using God's wisdom and have all the knowledge that it takes to make sure it's done and done correctly. Some of us have to make decisions at home that could promote someone or have to pull someone back. I mean, many of us are in, some of us have to have knowledge and wisdom to go get that other job. We have to have knowledge and wisdom to know when to speak and when not to speak. Who to speak to and who not to speak to. Who to embrace and who not to embrace. Well, Y'all looking at me like, well, that ain't scriptural. Yes, it is. Read Ecclesiastes. There's a time to and a time not to. God is good. The same man that prayed this wrote that, by the way. Ecclesiastes. Just letting you know, the wisest man, the man that asked for wisdom. And God said, you'll be the wisest that's ever lived. And you want to know what happened? All this riches and honor. Anybody know the, 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 the Queen of Sheba? Anybody know anything about the Queen of Sheba? She came because she heard all the way from Sheba how awesome God had blessed this king with his wisdom. And there was none greater than him. And when she came, she brought so much stuff. God poured out of the windows of heaven through her hands to Solomon blessings that he didn't even have room to receive. He gave to him good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, and was already rich. But she came with more riches and more honor to honor the man of God which was glorifying God. Riches, wealth, and honor. Let us pray. <sighs> Father, we thank you for your word today. We thank you. There was a pretty simple message in my eyes because of there wasn't a lot that needed to be broke down from the Greek and the Hebrew and, and the, we're in the Hebrew text. And it wasn't there wasn't a lot of sweat that had to come in. It's just basic understanding of all the sweat we have already put into this series. And we're going to examine some more prayers next week. But Father, help us to see this one today and let it marinate in our heart. So we'll know that when you put it together the way you put it together, and we follow your prescription, and we're seeing evidence day by day, piece by piece, verse by verse, <clears throat> that when those who follow your prescription for how you want things done, they're blessed by you. 
They're blessed by you inside, in their heart, in their mind, spiritually, emotionally, mentally. And the blessings are revealed outwardly as they live a life that is worthy to be called a Christian, that is worthy to be called a man or woman of God. When they live a life that when you see the things that have crumbled around them, all of a sudden being not only built back up, but being built back up, multiplied, greater than what it was before. When you look at those individuals and you see what the canker worm and the palmer worm and the locust had eaten up and chewed away and destroyed, that you're restoring those years, that you're restoring those days and times and those things. You said in your word in the New Testament that it will forsake mother, father, houses, land, and a list of other things for your sake, that you'll restore those things back unto us 100-fold along with eternal life and persecution. That's wonderful. And you said you'll restore that to us this lifetime. We already know about the sweet by and by. I think I mentioned that in the previous set. The sweet by and by is guaranteed. Of course, there's no flaws in heaven. There's no flaws in our eternity. But we have eternal life right now. The manifestation of what that is like needs to be exposed to those who are around us so that then we'll still know that there is a God in heaven and his son's name is Jesus Christ who came to save us and redeem us from our sins and give us eternal life. Thank you for this message. Thank you for filling us with the knowledge of your will. Now, Father, massage our hearts, renew our minds in this word today. Help us to live with more vigor and purpose to serve you and to honor you and to worship you that we may bring you glory because we ultimately will always receive the benefit. There's nothing you need, God. You just want to bless us. Help us to be obedient to your word, simply obedient to your word. We pray for the, for the gifts that have been given into this ministry, the finances that have been given, the gifts of, of items, food, clothes. Um, Father, we thank you. We thank you for even the things that you have been able to help us to obtain a, 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 a nice, cool, a warm place, sheltered from the elements to be able to come together and congregate and worship. Mm -hmm. It is not the biggest edifice in the world, Father, but you gave us somewhere nice, mm -hmm. a place to worship, and it's just... We just thank you for the simple things, Lord, for what you've given us in this ministry. And then you've made this ministry a ministry that is known in this town to do good things for people. As little as we are, God, you have taken us and given us honor and wealth and riches. There are people who are walking through this city that are glad that they met someone from New Beginning Celebration. And we didn't have to go out stretching and looking for it. Father, you just led us right to it. You just place them in our hands and thank you, Father. Even if they don't abide with us thereafter, that's okay. You called us to love the world just as you love the world. We love you, Father. We thank you so much for loving us first. For without you loving us, we could not love you. So we love you, God. We love God because you first loved us. And thank you for greater you that is in us than he that is in the world. Your love penetrates and permeates all things around us. Help us to walk humbly before you so that we can be used of you by you in times that are so unexpected. You step forward and you always have something to use our hands or our mouths to bless someone's life. Thank you for creating unselfish hearts in this ministry. But this is a ministry that people love one another. They love others and they're givers. And I'm so grateful to that. They give them their time, their resources. You are amazing. Multiply the things that have been given into this ministry, as you always do. You have multiplied it so greatly. And we're looking forward to nothing any different because you change not. You are the Lord and you are God. And besides you, there is no other. There is no variation or changing in you, Lord. We thank you. We love you. Amen. Okay, so what we have is a day that the Lord has made, and we're going to continue in it and rejoice in it. We are New Beginning Celebration right here, 3400 Trent Road, Sweet D. That's not for Pastor Damon. That's Sweet D, New Bern, North Carolina, 28562.
2, I believe it is. And you see our phone number behind me. New Beginning Celebration, we're at 252-631-2188. If you would like to give us a call, there is uh, someone to either answer the call or voice message. Please leave something there for us. And we also have an email address if you would like to email us. Whatever your comments or questions may be, nbcelebration at yahoo.com. You see it right there on the board or on the, the message behind me. And the website is... You got it, nbcelebration.com. You also can visit our YouTube channel, which obviously you may have, or you have visited the Facebook um, and seen this message. Again, visit our YouTube channel, Celebrating New Beginnings, Celebrating New Beginnings. You can catch up on all the messages in this series, so you can see how we got to the point of being able to understand how to examine this prayer that we examined today. And then you can provide your own testimony, as I have today of how great God is when you pray for what God purposes for you to pray for. And what he purposes us to pray for is what he's written in his word, which is his will. Because we don't understand what the will of a person is unless we can read it in writing. And so we only learn what a will is by someone communicating to us. Bless you today. Thank you for, again, taking your time. I pray that your time um, uh, was made purposeful today. Um, and, and that what we did today was useful for you in advancing the kingdom of God in your life. We love you, we thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time right here at New Beginning Celebration.